So we're going to try a uh, real world application of um, a quadratic equation. And it's not going to be a real world problem in the sense that this particular problem needs to be solved in the real world. But it's this kind of problem, um, or this kind of approach to certain kinds of problems um, that uh, are used in the real world. Okay, so it's kind of this is kind of a silly example, but it shows you a, an approach that you could take if you're actually faced with something similar in the real world. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read a bunch of stuff. And it's gonna be a bunch of numbers, but that but I'll make sense of all of it. So uh, we'll just run through it f uh, one time to kind of get the big picture of what we're going for, and then we'll draw diagrams and do it all out. So. Don't worry if none of this makes sense on the first pass. Okay, so the height of an object in free fall as a function of time um, in seconds with its initial height in, in meters, uh, initial velocity in meters per second, and acceleration due to gravity um, of 9.8 meters per second squared is described by the function um, the height at time, sorry, that should be time height h of t h of t. The height uh, as a function of time is equal to negative one-half times 9.8 uh, that's the acceleration due to gravity. So negative one-half times the acceleration due to gravity times the time in seconds squared plus the initial velocity times the amount of time that has passed plus the initial height. Um, also the distance an object travels at a constant velocity varies directly with its velocity and its traveling times. And that's just a fancy way of saying fancy way of saying that distance equals speed times time, or distance equals velocity times time. Okay, here's the problem. Suppose I'm flying at a height of 200 meters, and uh, I'm flying at a horizontal velocity of 30 meters per second, and I can throw a water balloon with an initial downward velocity of 3 meters per second. And suppose I want to hit a burning house on the ground with a water balloon. At what distance should I launch the balloon? Okay, so. Would anyone ever need to figure this out? No. But are there similar situations like fighting forest fires, like dropping bombs? Yes. Um, so here's a situation. I am flying. Uh, just me personally, not in a plane, like like Superman. I'm flying. So here's here's me. Uh, maybe like my arms are sticking out like that or something. Here's my little cape. Okay. I'm flying, and I am um, 200 meters above the ground. So let's let's draw the ground here. Uh, 200. Let's 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 say meters, not weird little whatever. Ah, I really it's really hard to draw M's. Okay, 200 meters. Uh, horizontal velocity of 30 meters per second. Okay. Um, and I want to throw a water balloon. Um, and I'm going to throw it downward, directly downward. Directly downward at 3 meters per second. So actually, I'm going to call that whoa. I'm going to call that velocity negative three meters per second. Um, because it's down, not up. Um, okay, thirty. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and the thing is, there's this building that's on fire. Um, and I'm going to go save the day building on fire um, and you know smoke okay I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a water balloon oops that is not gonna work okay I've got this water balloon okay and I'm gonna throw it straight down but it's not gonna go straight down right because I'm flying this way too, um, it's it's gonna go. Oops, whoa, 
that's not what it is going to do. It's going to it's going to go like that, right? I'm going to I'm going to throw it down, but because I'm going this way, it's going to keep the, the keep the mo keep that momentum. So this is going to have some horizontal velocity as well as some some downward um, velocity, right? So the question is At what distance should I launch the balloon? Actually, the question is, uh, at what distance? Sorry, that should be a straighter line. The distance from me to the building is going to be that. Um, but we'll figure out if we figure this out, uh, we can figure that out because this forms a right triangle. Okay, that's the setup. All right. Um, here we go. Okay. So the the function of of the height of the water balloon in terms of time is this. The height of the water balloon in terms of time in seconds. So like three seconds after I throw it downward, se seven seconds after I drop it downward, etc. Is um, negative one half times 9.8 which is the um, 9.8 meters per second per second is the acceleration due to gravity when you're close to the surface of the earth um, 9.8 uh, t squared plus the initial velocity times t plus uh, my initial height. Okay, so uh, if you look at this, um, this is uh, about to be a quadratic equation. Um, quadratic equations have the form zero equals some constant times x squared plus some constant times x plus um, some constant. So I've got some constant times x t squared plus some constant times t plus some constant. Um, I want to figure out how long is it going to take the balloon to go from me to the ground. I need to figure out what time it hits the ground, or how long it takes to hit the ground, right? Uh, we're going to call the building, uh, um, I guess I ignored, let's see, okay. Uh, let us figure out, let's just, yeah, let's say the, the building is 10 meters tall. Okay, so I need to figure out when it hits the top of the building, how long it's going to take from when I throw it down to when it hits the top of the building, uh, right? So I want height, so this will be height above the top of the building. So the height as a function of time, um, I'm going to say, when is the height zero? When does it hit the top of, of the building? Um, because that will give me the amount of time so okay, I'll throw it down, and it'll be going down, 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 and then hit the top of the building. That'll tell me how much time I've got um, before I need to before I need to throw it, right? So I hit it uh, accurately. So we've got zero is equal to negative one half times nine point eight t squared plus, and the initial velocity. Uh, is three is negative three meters per second because I'm throwing it down. I'm like kind of hurling it down. I'm not just letting it drop. Negative three meters per second times time uh, plus the initial height. The initial height above the roof is my height above the ground, 200 meters minus 10. So it's, so it's 190 meters above the height of the roof. Roof. Just making sense so far. All right. So now I've got a quadratic equation. Zero equals some constant times t squared plus some constant times t plus some constant. So I can solve for um, what time the water balloon hits the, uh, or what time the water balloon would get to the height of the roof, right? And so then once I know how long it'll take to get to the height of the roof, then, then I can use that to figure out 
well, at what point along my flight path should I actually throw it so that as it's when it's moving horizontally, it, it has time to fall, 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 and then hit the roof uh, at the right time. So I say 0 equals negative 1 half times 9.8 t squared uh, plus negative 3 t plus 190. So I can use the quadratic formula to solve for t here. Um, but first, let me let me clean this up. This is negative 1 half times 9.8. Uh, 9.8 divided by 2, 4.9, right? Yep. Negative, so negative 4.9. Uh, this part is negative 4.9. So A is negative 4.9. B is negative 3. And C is 190 in this quadratic equation. All right, so let's let's use the quadratic formula because um, we can't factor this very well to solve for x. So x or to t for t t is equal to negative b. So uh, b is negative three, so negative b would be three plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared would be 9 minus 4ac, 4 times a is negative 4.9, 4.9 times c, which is 190, over 2 times a, which is negative 4.9. OK, uh, let's just clean this up here. So we've got um, 4 times, all right, I'm going to do like this first, and then subtract all that from 9. Um, 4 times negative 4.9 times 190. And we'll do 9 minus that. Um, so that is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of all that stuff, 3,733. 3, so I'm going to square root that. So plus or minus 61 point something. So let's just round it to 61. Plus or minus 61 over 2 uh, times uh, negative 4.9. Oh, which was not. Yeah, right. Of course. Over negative 9.8. All right. I'm moving a little slow today. Uh, okay, so t is either um, 3 minus 61 over negative 9.8 or 3 plus 61 over negative 9.8. Okay, and I'm just going to do these on the calculator. So 3 minus 61 divided by um, negative 9.8. So 5.9 seconds or a negative number 3 plus 61 and 64 divided by negative 9.8 is negative 6.53. Okay. But the meaning of this in real world terms is, is time in seconds. So negative time doesn't make sense in the context of this problem. So the water balloon, after I throw it down, will take 5.9 seconds to hit the ground. OK. So we know, we know this part of its trajectory. Now let's figure out this part. Um, 
So if I if it's going to take 5.9 seconds to hit the ground after I launch it downward, um, how far away horizontally do I need to launch it? So the distance, so distance equals speed times time. So the distance, um, so if you're just going a straight line, the distance you go is you're, uh, at a constant velocity is speed times time. So if I'm driving 50 miles an hour for two hours, I drive 100 miles. So uh, my distance is speed. Now I'm going 30 meters per second in the horizontal direction. So uh, the balloon will be moving 30 meters per second in that direction too when it leaves me when I throw it down. All right. Um, you know, if you're riding on a train and you flip a coin, the coin doesn't go like sailing through the back window, right? Because the train is moving really fast, uh, the coin um, is going the same speed forward as the train, and it maintains that speed, right? Okay. So distance is equal to 30 times 5.9 seconds. So it's going 30 meters per second for 5.9 seconds, the water balloon. Because why only 5.9 seconds? Because after 5.9 seconds, it's hit the ground, or actually hit the level of the roof of the building. Therefore, it, it stops. You know, it's done. So 30 times, uh, 30 times 5.9 is equal to 177 meters. So this distance, so horizontally, um, if I draw a line from me to the ground, and, and then, and then, so that distance from where I am above the ground, the point over which, okay, if I'm at a, over a certain point over the ground, that distance from me to the burning building is 177 meters or it needs to be if I'm going to launch this water balloon and actually hit the target before the, um, the water balloon hits the ground or before I sail over the target and the water balloon doesn't get a chance to hit it. So that's 177 meters. So uh, if I needed to figure out this distance, like uh, me, actually, okay, I'm really running out of time here. Anyway. If I needed to figure out the distance of like actually me physically to the top of the building, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. I figured out one part of the triangle. I, I already have the other part because of my height above the ground. Um, so that triangle would be like this. Uh, this would be actually 190 meters because we're doing to the top of the building, we decided. Uh, this distance needs to be 177 meters. Uh, if I'm going to figure out the exact distance from me to the top of the building, um, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. This is a right triangle. Okay, so this is this is c. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I can let you do that. So that's this. Okay, like back to a real world application. If we're talking about planes dropping bombs, and you know you have a laser sight, that's how you would figure that out. I didn't want to do something like that. I want to do water balloons, but um, that would be the real world application. All right. Good job. Thanks for hanging in there.